Alright guys, so thank you for tuning in. Basically I just want to showcase uh, what I've done for the Mark II design for the Cinebrat uh, and how far it's come. Uh, also just give some insight and some information for you guys who are willing to try this on your own. Uh, some problems, etc, etc, that you're going to encounter with the design. So, uh, let's start with the original duct design. So this is based on Andy Shin's original duct STL. Uh, this is after maybe 10 different iterations of the duct size and design in terms of the supports also the mounting solution so these were this is this is essentially how i filmed the first video and got some of that footage which was really nice and smooth etc with that there were some problems that i encountered so we'll talk about that the original duct was too tall uh, some fitment issues in terms of fitting them um, given the size of the frame this caused some problems and i had to you know cut the duct in strange ways to fit everything so um, you know, with that I had to slice this part of the uh, frame itself. The problems I faced originally were tied to the weight, number one. I tried a bunch of different filaments to try to get them to be lightweight and durable, and there's some compromises here and there. Uh, basically, this is PLA, and uh, I tried PLA first, then I tried uh, ABS, I've tried TPU, I've tried nylon, uh, all of them were you know, had varied results. ABS gave me shrinkage and warpage issues, so these weren't very consistent. Um, nylon was good, but they were also very fragile because they're very stiff, so the wrong type of ding and they would, you know, chip. Uh, TPU, you know, here's a TPU version of the, Mount, of the Mark II design, and uh, this was good, but I also had some problems with uh, the way this was mounted and whatnot, so uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, in terms of prints, how does this work? You get the STL file, you put it face down on your on your slicer, you you know add supports everywhere, right? And then you print it. So it'll give you a nice little raft, you remove the supports, and then you grab a file and make sufficient room for this to be snugly fit in on fitted on your, your frame. You don't want it to be too loose, you don't want it to be too too tight. Uh, you want to make sure that you have that ability to remove them as, as you want. So why do you want to remove them? I personally love the way this flies acro without the ducts. So there, it's a lot of fun, it flies and performs great, and even with the chair design it's perfect. You put a GoPro and it's uh, a mini rig for a different type of flying. So we'll talk about flight characteristics afterwards, but this is the reason why I've made that, that type of design. The Mark II design. The Mark II design is smaller, thinner, lighter, shorter, um, also has a little cutout for a little bit more room as if you want to fit bigger batteries. So now the fitment issues are solved. It fits without a problem. There's no issue removing them, adding them. Uh, centering them is really easy. This also gave me some ideas in terms of what different props I wanted to try and what works, what doesn't work. Um, the, the depth of this duct is tied to the, you know some of the theory research I was doing, just reading up on why things are efficient in a certain way and why the design was you know made like this, etc. In terms of benefits, uh, I got more efficiency out of it, better prop fit. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the duct theory. Very important concept for ducts themselves is that they have a logarithmic throttle, meaning that you need more power once you, you, you top out the most efficient point in terms of how fast your motors are spinning to keep the air accelerating through the duct. So ducts themselves work on a principle of of uh, this outer lip which creates a pressure delta and essentially it's like a wing uh, on the outside you have the same concept lower pressure higher pressure and um, you you get the most amount of efficiency by having the prop be mounted as close as you can to the edge of the duct the theory behind it is basically you want to have 0 0.3 millimeters or less between the the edge of the prop and the duct you start to lose efficiency anywhere after that just getting close to a millimeter with these super hard so keep that in mind. If you can get to 0.5, you're doing great, um, but very tight and very tough to do. So that's something important to keep in mind. Um, now, these are traditionally mounted on, you know, horizontally to move air in one direction as you're flying. And so there's a lot of elements when you, that are specific to horizontal flight, but on a quad themselves, these have a lot more elements in terms of inefficiencies. As you, as you uh, start to tilt forward and backwards, the ducts themselves change in inefficiency based on the fact that they scoop air in and there's a difference in terms of how much efficient how efficient they're being in the back rather than in the front 
So this is why you can't actually fly acro with, with the, the ducts on. I mean, you can try, but after a certain amount of degrees, uh, you get squirrely behavior. It starts to, you know, move on, on the yaw axis. There's a little bit of a rollover, uh, and that's because you need the, the quad itself needs way more power to keep that side level uh, as you tilt since they lose efficiency, especially if you're moving forward, but you need to turn in one direction, which is not going to happen because you have a very inefficient situation on all sides. So um, the tilt and how much angle you put into this dictates how well they'll, they'll perform, but also, you know, depending on other factors like your, how much weight you have, what props you're using, etc. With that, I have to slice this part of the uh, frame itself and you know, cut this with a Dremel and then file it down. That gave me an idea for where to mount the chair, so I went through a bunch of designs for the different the chair. This is TPU printed 30% infill. Um, I've mounted the camera, which is an eagle, a uh, micro eagle. I've mounted it uh, at 5 degrees and the chair sits at 10 degrees. Uh, this is for a GoPro Hero session uh, or session format and uh, it could easily be modified to, to you know, seat uh, a Hero 7. So, that's basically that. Now moving to prop cutting. So, I'm gonna move to prop cutting and show you guys a bit about, you know, how I set that up. I basically used Andy's original design, which is a Dremel tool. I printed this out, uh, put a file inside, found the right fitment, Found a sample. This is the V1. So I found a sample for the V2 in terms of what I needed in terms of fit. Uh, you can see what this looks like. Uh, the gap itself looks a certain way, but you actually have to look at it carefully and try to measure it. It's very difficult. You may want to take a picture and take a look at it. There's many ways to do it. So we'll talk about good and bad things. Uh, I've experimented with all sorts of props. I've experimented with five-inch props. These are five-inch cut down. I've experimented with actual three-inch. Um, 42 pitch, three inch, three three pitch, and uh, or 30 degrees pitch, and even and I've experimented with four inch props as well, uh, and all of them gave me different results. I found that the weight of the prop super important to in terms of efficiency. Um, these were high pitched, so they gave me great performance, but a lot of jello, hard to balance. Um, the best ones performing so far have been the three threes. Um, these were just a dream. They're originally designed for acro and low load on the on the on the, the props. Once you found the length that you need and you've calibrated it with a clipped prop, what you're gonna do with a big prop, like a five inch one, is you're gonna take it and you're just gonna cut the end off. Right? And then you're going to fit it on. This is a tad too much, so you're going to cut a little bit more. Let's cut around the A. You want to turn on your Dremel tool. And and you, what you want to do is be able to file that down until it's nice and smooth. Um, like I said, five inch props seem to work, but they give a lot of vibrations. These are much, much better. They're, they're much better than larger props because they are very light. They're usually built and designed to, you know, to not overload the motors. You also don't have issues in terms of balance. It's much simpler to balance. So, you know, mount it on and, you know, let them rip. So that's basically this fit. Let's put this back in, in view. You know, you want to grab some of the flashing that you get when you're cutting these down. Just make sure that's gone. This is still just a test fit. And you'll put it inside on your motors and you know make sure this is obviously fitted properly and spaced accordingly. And all of a sudden you have a nice free spinning prop with as little as gap as possible. Um, these need a little bit of work, but in any case, that's the example I'm giving you. So you're gonna to wanna to cut a couple of sets and give it a test to see what works best. So now, troubleshooting. One of the most important parts that I've encountered when troubleshooting. 
if you have warm motors, you have an inefficiency somewhere. Um, but that's tricky because that is true, but it's also tied to how you how much throttle you give your, your, your motors. If you're punching it all the time, they're more inefficient the more throttle you give it. This is why the ducts are a good idea to carry more weight, but it's also a negative and a drawback if you're not flying properly. So this is gonna affect your, your flight time. The prop you choose will affect your flight time. The five inch, five, uh, the, the five five props gave me about two minutes flight time, really good performance, a lot more power, a lot of jello. So I gave up on those. The uh, two different types of three inch props gave me much better performance all around. Uh, these lower pitch ones didn't give me so much punch, but I didn't need it because they become more inefficient as you punch, so they worked out the best in my opinion. And then these three fours, I have a set that I, that I used initially and they gave me some smooth flying, a, a little bit more power, about the same flight time. So roughly with these two minutes, with these three minutes, without any ducts, uh, I get five minutes running these props and a lot of power, whatever I want to do. Of course, that's not carrying a GoPro. Uh, I've left the files in the link under the description. I have the ducts. There's basically two versions of it, left and right. You simply put print left and right and then you just swap them. I've made this little design here to mount your VTX antenna and your, your crossfire so that it's not in the way of the ducts in any way. Basically, that's it. If you guys have any questions, you know, any comments, please let me know. 